What's going on guys, back at you again with Sneaker Talk video number two. And just like last time, I encourage people to join the discussion and leave your opinions on these topics in this video in the comment section down below. Alright, so since my last video, I have not had any pickups as far as sneakers go, but as I was walking through Newtown the other day with my friend and my wife, I was able to snag me the Michael Jordan 50th birthday, 50th cover of Sports Illustrated, and I will get into that a little bit later in the video. But what I want to start off first with is these bots that are going around uh, that pretty much automatically RSVP on Twitter uh, for limited online only releases. Now I know that for me personally I'm not for them at all. Uh, like I said in my last video I'm a very firm believer of the first come first serve basis and you know if you don't think that you can wake up in time to get online, you know, not even have to leave your house in order to order yourself or try to order yourself a pair of the whatever limited release sneaker is releasing that day, then you should not be collecting sneakers. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't say that you shouldn't, you know, be collecting sneakers. Everyone is allowed to collect sneakers, obviously. What I should have said is that if you don't wake up in time or you sleep through your alarm and you miss the initial release of these online only exclusives then that's just how your luck goes that day you're gonna have to find another way to get them um, you know I've I have slept through multiple alerts saying that the retro 88s have been restocked and I can't do anything about it you know I'm and there's no way in hell that I'm going to give my information to someone and pay thirty to fifty dollars to pretty much have this machine automatically respond to these Twitter messages that are sent out uh, just so I can secure myself a pair and wake up whenever I want. And I know that right now the YouTube user ID Soul Creator actually has a link in his possession to one of these bots. Um, he has a video up right now. I will leave a link in the description down below or you can click right here for that video. And if you go there, what he basically is saying is uh, asking the people if he should reveal this link that he has. He doesn't condone using these bots just like I don't, but what he's saying in this video is that um, basically, you know, everyone has access to it, so everyone uses it on the next exclusive online only release, so that Nike will take a step back and kind of realize, whoa, you know, something's definitely not right with this, and kind of fix the security within their, um, within their website and uh, within their server and everything, because obviously, you know, if uh, you know, a thousand people out of a hundred thousand people are using this bot, they're not going to notice it. But if, you know, 30,000 out of a hundred thousand are using it, then maybe, you know, they just might catch on. So go to that video, leave a link in the comment box telling him that he should release this link that he has. And then the next topic I wanted to talk to you guys about is um, the age of someone who is starting to collect sneakers. And... The question is, at what age do you think that it is appropriate for someone to actually start pursuing the collection of sneakers? I mean, me personally, I don't think that collecting really anything, unless it's, you know, porno mags or something like that, should really have an age restriction on it. Um, I mean, if you can't afford to, but you got, you know, your parents are willing to dish out a couple bucks for you to get a pair of sneakers every, you know three or four months and why not you don't have to have a hundred pairs of sneakers in order to call it a collection um, you know I, I've I've stood up for multiple people on this website for people just coming in you know and being like oh well I bet your mom or dad bought you those sneakers and it's like oh, the kids clearly 13 years old who the hell else do you think bought it for them you know leave them alone you know, it's just a 13 year old kid he wants to get into the community don't shun them away don't don't show them that this is a harsh environment you know, embrace them and, you know, bring them in, show them that they're welcome here. You know, don't make fun of the fact that they have two or three shoes in their collection. I mean, hell, I only have, you know, 15 pairs of shoes in my collection, and that's nothing in comparison to some of the other people on here. It doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, I mean, that that's my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think. And now, I'll get into the magazine here. So, uh, I mean, if you had the chance to read it, the article in it is pretty good. I don't think that for such, you know, a milestone in someone's life as turning 50 or getting, the, you know, their 50th Sports Illustrated cover, uh, I don't think that 
Sports Illustrated did that great of a job as actually portraying how great of a player Michael was. I mean, they got like two or three paragraphs in here talking about how Michael boycotted uh, interviews with Sports Illustrated because of when he was playing for the White Sox franchise um, in baseball, that they were mocking his that the career that he was trying to pursue with it. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're clearly upset in the article. There's a lot of talking about how instead of him having the flu, that he was just extremely hungover, and that, you know, a couple uh, talking about how he doesn't openly talk about how he donates to charities and all this stuff. And, I mean, they spent a good portion of this article pointing out the factual flaws of Michael. People who know about Michael Jordan obviously know that he has his flaws, but, I mean, when you're putting someone, you know, you make them look so good on the cover like that, you don't really think that the article is going to be about how, you know, as he's turning 50, that he is, you know, the owner of a team that is notorious for losing. Or, you know, flat out calling him out for not speaking upon the charities that he chooses to donate his money to. And, I mean, it's just not the time and place to be doing it, especially for someone's 50th birthday. Um, I mean, I understand that they might be bitter about him still continuously boycotting interviews with Sports Illustrated, but, I mean, you make someone out to look like an idiot, what do you expect? But don't get me wrong, the article is a very good read, and I do recommend that if you get the chance to go to your local newsstand or grocery store or wherever uh, in your town or neighborhood sells magazines, definitely go pick this up. And then the very last thing I want to talk to you guys about is something that I like to call trust fund sneaker collecting. Now, I personally, I, I can't stand it when I see it. Um, when it's clearly obvious that this, you know, someone has everything in their life handed to them and they just have this mass array of sneakers, you know, from uh, Louis Vuitton to the Yeezys and stuff like that, just shoes that... You know, an average sneaker collector is not going to be able to get their hands on unless they save up for it that these, you know, 16, 17-year-old kids are getting. Um, it doesn't bug me that they have the sneakers. What bugs me is when they try to come off like they've had a terribly hard upbringing. And I mean, you know, these kids could have just gone through their parents getting a divorce and stuff like that. And I mean, that's hard on anybody. But that factor doesn't come in when you're collecting sneakers, you know, especially... If you're posting videos about how you just bought, you know, your third pair of Black Yeezy 2s. Um, but, I mean, you know, me, me personally, uh, I just started back at work, working for a shipping facility, just loading up trucks and sorting out freight. That's how I personally earn my money. Uh, I mean, there's really no question at hand. It's more along the lines of uh, just me throwing out my opinion on it. Like I said, I call them trust fund sneaker collectors or trust fund sneaker collections and they might have the shoe physically in their possession but I consider that collection to be null and void if you're just you know you're not actually experiencing the whole the thrill of waiting outside of a store you not know, wondering I wonder if I'm gonna get my shoes today I wonder if they're gonna have my size left when I get up to the counter and stuff like that when you can just go on eBay and pay reseller price like that especially at the age of 16 to 19 um, not saying that some of these kids don't work hard, not have a job and stuff like that, but I mean, you can kind of tell, and that's just my personal opinion. Um, before I leave, I will show you guys my most recent restoration. I'll leave a picture up right now, and boom, there you have it. Uh, it's obviously a pair of Adidas shell toes. Uh, I got a friend here from high school visiting. He just recently got leave from... Uh, deployment in Afghanistan and he told me he wanted to come over here so I'm letting him stay in my house I saw his sneakers are in pretty rough shape offered him a free restoration and this is what he got alright guys like I said please don't be afraid to join the discussion down below in the comment box and if you get the chance make sure you pick up this issue of Sports Illustrated and as always be sure to check out my Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash sneaker revive sydney feel free to follow me on instagram my username will be in the description down below it is my username on here on youtube and have yourself a great day